by Abhijan Bhattacharya on EMEC. And I suppose both of the topics were profitable to you. And we are looking forward for today's session, which happens to be the hands on sessions. Both the morning session and the afternoon session will be hands on. The speakers as well as the instructors will give you certain instruction in configuring your system in running the course. Hopefully, everyone has logged in through their laptops as well as the desktops. For today's schedule, we have Mr. Adarsh Vio with us, who is the director, Ecartech. And now I request my colleague, Professor Jamuna, to introduce today's speaker. And the rest of the session for today morning will be handled by Mr. Adarsh Vio. Thank you, Sid. So, good morning to all the participants for the second day uh, FDP on uh, research opportunities and uh, recent trends in IoT and WSL. So, it's my privilege uh, to welcome and introduce uh, today's session speaker, Mr. Adarsh Bu. So, Mr. Adarsh is working as a lead business analyst at Happiest Minds Technology and previously worked with Inno Minds, Smartron, Excellent Technologies, Education, and uh, Research Networks. India and the Indian Institute of Science, IASE. So he's the president of uh, Global Internet uh, Society, Rural Development uh, Special Interest Group, and a joint the secretary of ISOC, India Hyderabad Council. <laughs> Mr. Adarsh is an ad hoc multi-stakeholder and a founding member for the <laughs> Internet Governance Forum, India. So Mr. Adarsh is a board officer and founding member for Internet Society India, Hyderabad Chapter, and is representing India for Youth Global Villages Project with Kenya and Uruguay to empower youth related to internet governance. He is an active member of IEEE, IIESOC, Youth Internet Governance Forum India, and Internet Society. He has multiple research-based contribution in IEEE, A2AN, and many more conference and journals. So, Mr. Adarsh has received many awards and fellowship from IETF, ISOC, etc. So, now I request Mr. Adarsh sir to take over this session. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank you for giving my introduction and as well as uh, thank you for the whole department for uh, hosting this uh, wonderful <laughs> session today. And, uh, okay, uh, I hope I'm uh, audible pro clearly, right? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, in today's session, I will uh, go ahead into sector. Um, so, yeah, like I'm, since it's like a faculty development program in IoT and WS and IoT is like an, um, the boom uh, area. IoT means a lot of stuff is there. So, we think of IoT means it's like an, something where just to monitor and to push the data. Is it that that's more good enough? No. So, uh, in the IoT perspective, when we think of, so, one area, lot of uh, research is going on, R&D developments are going on, and the another area, lot of products, the developments are going on. So, um, in this perspective, when we look into it, um, so where the industry perspective, so even tomorrow as well, I have one of the presentation, one of the answer session, there I will uh, take up in the perspective of an uh, research and development, how the R&D will be taken care of, is what are all the simulators in, uh, which is very supportive and where are the emerging protocols in the IoT. And that is supported from an uh, IETF is working on uh, emerging uh, protocols and emerging the simulation and also the um, stack wise. So we are going to look into it on tomorrow. Session. Today, uh, specifically, I would like to uh, bring up the area with respect to the um, industry. So where industries are uh, looking for and where uh, even as an industry person, I am going to present uh, what the concepts, where the industries are lagging, what are the industries are facing challenges uh, and what are the industries are actually looking for in IoT. 
and what actually the industries are doing up. So because in industry perspective, um, it's very important to bring up the product to market in a very fast way. So the duration of time matters a lot. So in this aspect, when we think of what is the best solution? So which one is the secured and where we can leverage the egg if there is an existing system where we can leverage it and how can we bring up the product to the market in a shorter duration of time with an uh, making use of an emerging technologies? That's what we'll think of. Uh, so we are going to look into that uh, and today I'm going to concentrate about on uh, Microsoft Azure, the Azure platform uh, in that Azure platform. I'm going to give an overview of the Azure platform uh, in the first half of the session. And then uh, we are going to play around by making use of an um, Azure simulated um, the free account just to create and simulated um, sensor modules and also let to uh, creation of an IoT hub and also to the placing an uh, modules and to ca capture the sensor data. So this is what we are going to try it out on uh, today. And also the models that we can bring for the um, intelligence. Uh, for a completely edge and where we can perform the analytics part in the edge devices. That's what all we are going to look at in today's session. So I'll just share my slide. Yeah, uh, as I going on, it's completely like an, uh, Azure. So uh, there are a lot of an IoT platforms out there. So uh, in the IoT perspective, like Microsoft Azure is there, and also like an uh, AWS is there, and Google Cloud is there. But among all that, um, today I'm just going to pick, as I picked up only the Azure. I'm going to give an overview of an Azure. So as well as like an, I will share. Uh, I hope this can help you all like an envision how you can empower the new possibilities in your own organization and achieve the like an uh, train of the students or else like an, it will be helpful for the organization to understand where the industries are looking up, uh, especially for specific which area and where it can bring the greater business impact for the industries as well. Uh, so we are going to look into that perspective. Yeah, I'm. I'm not going to touch this. Like I, I well, like what? Why IoT? So we know very well. Uh, even uh, yesterday, uh, speakers, um, the Corey's uh, and Abhijam Bhattacharya with respect to the 5G technology, all they are given a wonderful session about and like and why IoT, what all the types of IoTs are, protocols, stacks are there, and how it is like an utilized. Um, what are all the use cases, perspective, and all they are given very wonderful session. Just I'm moving to the next one. What is an IoT uh, in real about? So actually, we know Internet of the Things is like a set of technology solutions. So you, you, even as like our yesterday speakers have wonderfully explained about that. So this is where it is going to connect uh, the things. So this is where it is going to build on the connectivity of billion of devices. Uh, it's like a wide number of devices for like in consumers, and it can be for an enterprise size. And also this IoT platform. I like can offer command to control as well and unpredictable access to the data and continuously can uh, implement through the designed connected architecture. So in this specific one, so IoT solution focus on the major three things, the three core components. So what are the three means? So first thing is like an things. So the things, this is the T in IoT. I can tell the things. So the T in IoT, it means physical objects such as like an industrial equipment or like an devices or sensors that connected to the internet uh, like an possibility and uh, interoperability which will have us. And the next one is like an insights. Insights means the connected devices like can collect vast amount of information. It's like a lot of information because billion billion of sensor devices will be there. Yes. Are you sharing the screen? Uh, yes. Uh, it's not, it's not it's sharing the same. Okay, just one minute. Let me stop and reshare it back. Share screen. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, are you able to visualize it? Yes, sir. Now it is visible. Okay, good. Cool, cool. uh, sorry, it's maybe my bad. Yeah. So, uh, as I was mentioning, slide number. So the three main focus components in IoT. I was talking in the industry perspective. Today, I'm, like and as I mentioned, focusing much on the industry perspective. So the things, as I told, it is completely about the equipments and the devices and the sensors, which will read different kind of parameters. And the insights is the part. So where it is like. Uh, insights is the part is like where it is like and get the analyzed and turned into an actionable knowledge. So the data is very much important. So uh, there we will make use of like an artificial intelligence technology, machine learning and deep learning aspects. And the last thing is like in the third main core focus area is an actions. So actions means uh, it is like an uh, taking of an insight. What are the from the insight perspective? Taking the insight derived from the data analysis and the people in the people perspective as well. So we will take up the data and we will think we will analyze and we will come up with and take up some specific decision and we will take an action in the same way this year as well. So in the IoT in the third core area, the action will also uh, is the taking the inside derived, derived data from the inside part and then it will. So yeah, uh, so from the inside, it will take up the data and it will put the data for the decision. So it will come up, it will make the a decision and to take the specific action. So you have the connected to their, like it may be in business or it may be in some kind of a solution as well to the systems that tools will be specifically used in the actions part. Yeah, uh, this is just perspective of the, like, and, uh, if I want to tell about like and what industries are looking into in the perspective of in business, uh, I just wanted to cover in the slide. So business wants to uh, revolve like uh, either the operations or as like an uh, products and uh, like an how they interact with the customers and by connecting the devices as well, um, like and collecting the data, it becomes possible to analyze that information uh, to create like a new insights. So uh, this according to like in some of the research by uh, Keystone uh, strategy, so leaders in digital transformation generate an average of like an hundred million dollars more in operating income each year, just because of the uh, specific from the data. So where does the IoT come from? So if you look into that, IoT devices come with an on and off switch from IoT uh, from the connectivity to the internet. So this is what first part. If you look into it, so IoT, okay, controlling a device on and off the light bulb in you know, our uh, smart home, build, home or a smart building solutions. So this include like in most anything you can uh, think of. That can, can be like an, uh, when you think of like in controlling a uh, switch or a bulb, so it can be like a cell phone, thermostat, doorbell, or medical devices in the IoT, or it's like a biochip or um, transponders in a farm animal, or like a data gets, in, in all this perspective, so the information will be get transferred over a network to a data center. So all the information which is con converted to a digital and it will be transformed to the data center. This creates an gigantic network of internet. In, uh, I mean the internet connected things, and that's specifically for all the devices. So here, uh, what exactly is the impact of getting data uh, from all these things? from the edge and putting them together, there are like in four major benefits are there. So those are the four major benefits I am just going to showcase here. First one is like an agility. So this, that is like an uh, fast speed to market like in 40 to 50 percent. So agility means in the cycle of development, when you speed up the process and infrastructure, uh, it, it means you can get your uh, products and services to the market more quickly, very, very in a very uh, faster way. More than half of the companies using IoT have seen such results. So that's like in 40 to 50 percent of them. And the second part is like in productivity. In the productivity, uh, if you make a real-time information available and you eliminate the delay of waiting that comes with and collecting and analyzing information, so that's that helps like and make people more productive. So in that in that perspective, 
um, in the work, like in workforce productive, uh, 20 to 30 percent have uh, seen that uh, higher workforce uh, productivity. And the third part is like an stability. Stability is very much important in IoT. So IoT offers like an preventative maintenance through its insight. Um, that's like a such such insight that was not available before. Um, having this insight can help like in identifying weakness in uh, advance of their uh, becoming serious issues. What on, what what can be the issues in that perspective? So up to sixty percent fewer IT errors are uh, and less rework as possible uh, due to the IoT solutions. And the last one, performance. We think of like an the performance is the very uh, best one, it's like an 80%, but no, now the performance, the better the information used for analysis, so the better decision the devices can make here. So which can lead like an uh, higher profits for an, uh, for an industry perspective. They can faster speed to market, as I mentioned before, if it is very faster way, uh, we, we can move to the market with products can also increase the profitability also will be increased in a very higher way. So the performance is like in 12 to 20 percent in the industries is going on. Okay, just I want to. Uh, this is just like a uh, few ideas about an IoT, which we all know very well, uh, and just few uh, words about and like an. I just gone through one of the IoT uh, signals report 2020 from the Azure. So I just kept a few of the points from that. So. Yeah, there are like so many trends are going on in IoT, like uh, the trends and opportunities seen uh, in this year, uh, like in 2020, is like an IoT adaptation has become uh, like a very uh, key to the business success. So even industries are looking uh, into an IoT uh, adaptation, and even not only the industry, in farming sector, in the building sector, in the energy sector, in all the different sectors are very much concentrated in the adaptation of an uh, IoT. So that's what like, it becomes like a key business success. As I mentioned, it's like 91% of an uh, um, business survived with adaptation of an IoT in 2020. So that in a COVID situation. 90% of decision makers believed it. It's like an, uh, critical to their company continued success. Around like 90% of them. And many... Uh, Adopters have experienced the failure of in POC. So even uh, we also like can face a lot, lot of challenges uh, because due to the COVID situation when it, when it into the uh, market into the industries. So we can't um, make an import or export of the devices. We are very much dependent on the uh, out of country uh, manufacturers for some of the devices. At that time, we wanted to announce manufacturing process, which is like in POC formations. So many adopters uh, that the IoT adopters have experienced the failure in the POC. So this is like an uh, POC failure uh, due to the business challenge. It, it is pointed like an around 70 percent, and scalability challenges is pointed around like 61 uh, percent. So um, in this perspective, IoT into their long-term strategy ideally that helps uh, them to come from the single solution provider with a broader supply network. Uh, that that will uh, help them to navigate the complexity of holding out of the IoT into a scale. And in in this COVID nineteen, um, as it's the accelerating IoT strategies, one in three decision makers state their organizations will increase their investment in IoT due to COVID nineteen. So that's one. Uh, While well, another forty one percent. Uh, uh, say they will maintain the same level of commitment. And finally, uh, it's like we having uh, an emerging technologies coming to the forefront. There's like a 79% of organization adopt artificial intelligence as a part of their IoT solution. And uh, with 73% incorporating edge computing, and also like a 73 uh, is going to implementing against the digital twin strategy. So uh, this is like, it, with respect, it's going on in the last one year. The trend is going on with respect to the due to the COVID situation. The trend of uh, IoT was going on. So this report, um, so it is like an uh, actually in, uh, when I gone through the report, they asked like a series of questions, like I'm pretending for an adaptation, challenge, trend, and opportunities mentioned in like an uh, what are all we have seen in the previous slide. So according to that result. 
IoT adaptation or as a kind of satisfaction and value of strong around the world uh, as in the satisfaction le level. So they have broken this uh, slide down into the user percentage and their satisfaction in the categories. For the first, we will look at the adaptation drive. So this is the IoT adaptation drive. So of some of the world largest countries, you can see both use and satisfaction at very uh, in a very high, high speed and satisfaction is very much very high. So within those countries, so in among that, uh, within those countries, the study examined like in different uh, industries to see how they are adopting and becoming more reliant on uh, IoT. So they are very much uh, uh, depending on the IoT. The four industries we are uh, what they have chosen for uh, like in spotlight here. So in that one, uh, that is like in manufacturing, retail, healthcare, and energy. These are like in different kinds of uh, four industries where they are concentrated. As we can see here, so the result minor like and it's very close. Uh, those for the spotlight countries uh, with retail and the energy being the strongest in the uh, adaptation. So we can see here. Uh, they are like in very uh, in the IoT perspective adaptation. They are very much uh, strong in the adaptation and the satisfaction level as well. Uh, top reasons for adopting an IoT. Uh, I'm just skipping this one. This would be like an, uh, very much in the business perspective. Yeah, this is very much interesting. Challenges for proof of concept in IoT. So yeah, very very uh, much industries have seen the challenges. Uh, as I mentioned, we have seen uh, based on the survey, uh, lot so many industries have seen the challenges to build up just in the POC itself or in the initial uh, for their product. So sometimes companies decide like and they want to adopt IoT, but they can develop their proof of concept. For sure, it all falls apart. The study actually uh, asked they, what they have done, as I mentioned, they went to on, uh, asking like, in, uh, multiple questions pertaining to the topic. And uh, one thing they have discovered was the issue is not buying from leadership, uh, it is, it's especially on the planning and the long term strategy with an IoT. So, um, in this slide, before change management. One through three and two, one, two, two, one, two, two, three, so one, three, three. I think. Okay. Overall, we see here uh, thirty percent of those survived experience uh, some from the uh, project failure uh, during the trial stage itself, uh, as to the types of and challenges they encountered, and the majority cited business and scalability as the main uh, culprit in the IoT for the adaptation. So, when I'm uh, showcasing this is mean this we, we have to understand the challenges, then we can come up with the best solution. Okay. Uh, just uh, moving on to the next. I'm just keeping up these slides and moving on to the Microsoft IoT without wasting time because we need much more time for our uh, uh, hands on as well. That's the reason. Okay. In the Microsoft Azure, so Azure IoT, uh, so one of the good solution. Uh, even we're trying, even AWS is also one of the good solution. We can utilize our own uh, with the preferred one. So. Today, since we are talking much about an Azure, Azure IoT is a collection of like a Microsoft managed uh, cloud service that is like an uh, that connect and monitor and like a billion of IoT assets. So, uh, I think it uh, we can like in quickly uh, vis a vision for an like a connected future into a reality with like a secure uh, security perspective as well as like a scalability perspective and a complete edge to cloud IoT solution as well. So uh, in this slide, I just, like in just broken down the uh, platform into five uh, primary pillars. So these five primary pillars are very much important. Uh, so among those five primary pillars, develop with a choice. So simple tools, like in simple templates, and simple like an open source. So this like in very much it is very much important during the uh, any product development uh, development process. So we can you can build on uh, open and flexible IoT solution on our terms. That's our requirement. So get like in leading the devices management, cloud integration, and uh, choices across like kind of fully managed application for IoT platform services. So the second thing is like in prepare for future innovation. Yeah, this is very much important as like an innovation is like an journey that's like an without end. 
So we can build uh, on a platform uh, that's like an, and with the ecosystem with a bold communication and sustainability, and also like in continuously enhance the data, AI and analytic solutions, integrate into an, our existing systems, launching it to a new opportunities. There's so much of potential here uh, in the innovation plant. Third part is the securing the data. Yeah, security is the aspect where we will think of each and every point. So with Azure IoT, uh, we, uh, we are not getting deep dive into the uh, security part. I know today we can, so you can look into it. So you can trust your data estate is like a secure from end to end point in the cloud. That is like and because uh, their pattern with the most proactive leader in the IoT security. The largest profile, what they are like in company certification in the industry they are providing. And the power to the edge. So edge analytics is the main which comes up in mind when, when it we think of like a power to the edge. So Azure IoT uh, will make like an um, will move the artificial intelligence and the business work models to the edge. So it, we can't trust the in network all the time. Sometimes the devices are to are supposed to work in the offline. So in that perspective, the edge analytics plays a very great role. So it will let uh, like and react with more agility, operate more reliable, and also like an uh, speed. Like it will spend very less time transmitting data to the uh, cloud as well. So uh, that is very good with an uh, edge analytics and the scale to the global. So in this one, scalability is always an important issue. So here Azure IoT, uh, we can unlock through the largest IoT ecosystem to the global to the sphere where we can, whenever we can, are ready to grow into the grow, uh, grow and uh, ready to move to the market. So Azure uh, dedicated into improving like in the fact as I've seen, uh, the, uh, as I've seen like in their investment like in five billion to do all this stuff. Okay, uh, this is very very high level. Um, so just like let's look deeper into the platform to understand, and we can start uh, out or we can with the developer with the choice, and then we can move to the answer part. So let me move it first and that perspective. Azure IoT Central, and we, we probably some few of them have heard about an Azure IoT Central, Azure IoT Hub. Just just take off the Azure IoT Central, IoT Hub, and digital twins. Yeah, even yesterday session I was there in the uh, first half. Like, and uh, it was uh, uh, a speaker was telling about in digital teams, hub, IoT hub, and all. So digital teams is very much uh, important. Let's look into it. How the Azure is platform is providing, how we can simulate, and how we can create our digital teams, and how we can create our IoT hub and all stuff. Azure IoT Central is like an uh, easiest and most like an uh, cost effective. Uh, Sorry, I won't mention the cost effective. It is depends. Uh, we can tell like and connect to the and manage the devices with a scale. It connects our IoT devices to the cloud faster, like in uh, into the platform, and also it will make use of an Azure certificate uh, certified for the IoT device catalog that they will offer. So uh, Azure IoT app is like a platform is completely of a service. So it is like an established like an bi-directional communication so with a billion of an IoT devices and enhance the security with the pair device for authentication purpose. And it will provisioning devices with a scale of an IoT that is a device uh, onboarding process the provisioning can be. And also manage devices to scale with the device management. And also like an, we will get like a multiple language um, and open source SDKs for the customization and for the development as well. The third part is like a digital twin. Okay, yeah, digital twin is like a DT, uh, is like a dynamic uh, digital representation of a uh, physical piece of an equipment. So, or, or like an, or a, it can be like a sensor nodes or it present things, and it's associated with an, with respect to the environment. In this case, every digital twin has a dynamic data model. Like and containing only a few or even thousands or data attributes uh, of the physical things to our system. Here, uh, attributes are associated with respect to the sensors. What are the sensors that we are monitoring? That is like in measuring the temperature, it can be a pressure or any other variables uh, and associated physical in order to represent the real world operating conditions.
Okay, uh, just let's look into the preparing future innovation part. In the innovation part, that's where analytics will come into part, which much more. Uh, Azure, uh, like in uh, time series insights. So it's like in, is a serverless, fully managed platform as a, a that's the pass, uh, that is like an PAS pass service, like a platform as a service that we will uh, we will get uh, the solution built for an IoT. So just to look into a few. Uh, Things in, in this one is like an uh, highly uh, contextualized and also like in time series optimized and uh, uh, IoT scale data that is like an insighted and also built in rich user experience. And uh, this is like a rich analytics APIs are available. One more thing. So, whatever the analytics or performance that we wanted to do, so we'll get a lot of an uh, uh, APIs for an ad hoc exploration and also for an exploration intelligence. And also like a JavaScript uh, control library for building a custom analytics apps also uh, available in this one. Security part. Uh, okay, in the security part also, if you look into it, uh, Azure Defender for IoT is there. So that protects like an unmanaged, uh, like an unmanaged IoT or like OT devices uh, with the uh, agent. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Azure uh, Defender like an IoT like in protects like an unmanaged uh, devices uh, that is like an agentless discovery and also it's like an un, uh, vulnerability management and the threat detection and all performs. And also Azure uh, Essential is like an uh, providing intelligent security analytics for your uh, entire enterprise solutions. Um, so, so that's that's really, uh, is like an cl first cloud native uh, industry first cloud native solutions is like an uh, so kind of. The next is like an Azure Sphere. So Azure Sphere is like an uh, offers and comforts and see uh, IoT security solution. It includes like an hardware and OS and cloud components as well. And the next one is like an Azure Sphere Guardian. So this increases like an brownfield uh, security posture pair with an existing equipment to enable the secured connectivity in between the devices. And the next is like an Azure IoT Central. So this will um, reduce the risk by using a security posture management as well as like an threat monitoring and also like an uh, remediation process. And, all. and Azure IoT Hedge. Yeah, um, this ensures like an, uh, the right software on the devices and that only authorized edge device and can communicate with the one another. That could be an ad hoc network. And the, or the last one is like an Azure IoT. This enables like an highly secured and reliable communication between um, our, our IoT applications and the devices that can be managed, managed very well. Uh, just to in the move on to the ants on since it's time consuming, I'm just moving on with the slides. Uh, so uh, just the very important points I just highlighted on the Azure IoT Central IoT Hub and as well as the security point analytics part. So uh, Microsoft is like an industry leading profile as a service. Uh, they are that is like a platform as a service, software as a service. So, so that's a SaaS uh, solution. So Azure IoT puts in position to the disrupt and create new revenue streams and like, uh, uh, solutions will be provided. It can be like, an, uh, they're, they're working like in priority verticals, manufacturing, retail, agriculture, energy, smart places, healthcare and transformation. So in each sector, the it can be like an analytics part that where we'll make use of an Azure stream analytics or like a uh, database, or else it can be like an logical applications, machine learning, artificial intelligence, or cognitive services. Also, different kinds of an, uh, services we can make use. That with respect to we can see Azure IoT solutions, IoT Central is there, and Dynamics Connected Field services are there, and Azure Service for IoT. We can see a lot of an Azure IoT services are there, and the Edge. With respect to the Edge service, also we can see that even from the Azure Autos, Azure Sphere, Azure Desk, and its many more continues. Uh, yeah, this is just an ILL architecture that that we are going to work on. Okay, and since I, my target was like I have to spend 30 minutes on the theoretical part because we need such more about an uh, and so. 
the time for an answer. Okay, so today uh, we are going to work on completely on the simulation part. So in this simulation part, like and like deploying our first IoT edge module in the Windows. Yeah, most will be in a Linux platform. So where we will make use of an um, command prompt for an uh, completely to make use of a simulation and to create a simulated end devices to get the data. But in today's, we are completely making use of a Windows platform. So where we where here we can make use of an our first IoT module on the um, Windows device. So here, uh, specifically, we are going to uh, make like a four important things. So that is like an I would just pointed like an one, two, three, and the four. First thing is like in creating an IoT. So yeah, before going to the creation of an IoT, the very first we are we are going to do in this and on is first we are going to get our free Azure uh, IoT uh, account. So that is like an validate for like an twelve months. Um, and only thing you have to provide your um, debit card uh, information, which will charge you only for Indian rupees. It is like in two rupees. Uh, it will be charged, and it is valid for twelve months, uh, completely free. So in that twelve month duration, you can deactivate the account. But I request for today's and so on, you have to uh, make use of the process with an registration with an Azure IoT Central to get access with an free account, and you have to provide your uh, um, debit card details probably uh, to. Uh, it will to charge uh, for very minimum and to get access for the Azure IT Center. So once after getting our account, I, I will go through the steps. Once after we are able to get the uh, free platform, Azure IT Center platform, so we are going to work with an uh, formation of an IoT, that is the creation of an um, IoT hub. After the creation of an IoT hub, we are going to register an IoT edge devices. So this will be our an, uh, edge devices. We are going to uh, register our IoT devices to our an IoT hub. So, and then we are going to install and start the IoT edge for an Linux on Windows runtime. And then we are going to deploy the modules. So it can be an analytics module, or it can be like an any kind of a module that the modules that we are going to uh, remotely we are going to deploy to the module uh, to this our device. And then we are going to at last we are going to monitor the data from the a simulated module. So from the simulated sensor module. So we'll, we'll uh, get into the and so on. Okay, I have my account as like a pre-ready. So just I given the first very stuff. So what we have to do. So I request everyone to follow with me. Um, if you have any queries, you can drop a message in chat box. Am I able to? Yeah. So the thing is, let's go in parallel. So first, the very first thing, as I mentioned, you have to uh, create your Microsoft Azure account. So let me even let me move to the browser and we'll show you how to uh, create an account. Oh, okay, I think I'm not able to minimize this. Just one. I hope you're able to see my uh, browser now. So in a browser, uh, I request everyone to open your portal, um, sorry, uh, the web browser. Any, It can be any web browser. It can be on Microsoft Edge or it can be on any of that browser uh, that you prefer. So open that one and go to the portal azure.com. Meanwhile, I will just give the link in a chat box as well where you all can access it. Okay. 
portal azure.com so once you go to the portal azure.com if you have a microsoft azure account just feel free to log into it and uh, if you don't have a microsoft azure account so if you have an existing account with a microsoft azure just give the credentials to it and just log into it if you don't have so then you have to go with and create one so in the create one so it will ask you for an existing any even it will support within gmail it is not supposed to be an organization an email account you can be like an any account uh, just um, i will give like an other dot uh, be dot you at the gmail dot com yeah this have already an account i think yeah this have an account just something any of your gmail account just provide it and it will ask you for an a credential that is like to provide and create a password so provide and password once after the password now you can see in my screen so there you will get an code the generated code will be sent to your gmail uh, account so you have to take the uh, sent code and you have to paste it here and click next I hope uh, everyone following it. If not, just feel free to uh, drop me a message in chat box. So make sure that you are creating a Microsoft Azure account here. So I'm just repeating. So if you don't have a Microsoft Azure account, so Microsoft account, just create one. And the code while well, creation, you can make it up in Gmail uh, mail address as well. So once you give the Gmail mail address, it will ask you for and uh, provide an, um, the password and to create a password and after the password it will ask you to send to enter the code specifically that is sent to your email address that is for a gmail address okay everyone able to follow i hope so after that so i hope uh, once you are able to account you must see a screen as like i'm just facing a switching uh, screens just just uh, bear me So you will get, you will enter into a welcome to Azure once you are successfully able to create an account. So as as shown here. So in there, uh, the first option will be there. Start with an Azure free trial. So click on the start button. So there it will ask you like in three information. One is like your complete your profile information and your identification verification by card identity. So and uh, to identify yourself, they this is where you have to provide your debit card details and that will charge very very minimal and then the agreement just a checkbox and there you are ready to go and we'll just give the two minutes of time so where you can uh, follow the process
Mr. Adar, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, I hope everyone able to um, make the registration successfully. Once you're able to make the registration successfully, I hope you are, you are able to get land in the screen. So that is the dashboard of an Azure IoT port. So in this dashboard, you will see a lot of stuff. Don't get confused. Don't worry about a lot of stuff. So at the very initial stage, um, yeah, a lot of things will just make us scared. So here we will see like an virtual machines, app services, storage accounts, and uh, even Kubernetes services, there will be like in Docker services, and all. Um, don't worry about that one. And even in the all resources, in the resources there will be an formation of an IoT hub. So that's what we are going to form. So uh, one, we are going to create our own IoT hub. So then we will, we must be able to see an IoT hub here. So. I hope everyone able to successfully register uh, now and uh, by giving the details, your profile details as well as the um, uh, identification details as well. Once you are successfully landed on this screen, so on the top right corner, you will see an icon called as like a cloud shell. Just make click on that. So this is the way we are going to make use of it. This is if it is a Linux, that is completely uh, different. So uh, since it is like and specifically uh, Windows, we are making use of a cloud shell. We are not going to make use of an, uh, any uh, terminal. So yeah, completely, we are going to make use of a cloud shell for executing our commands and to create an uh, uh, IoT hub as well. So, okay, uh, since it's a new account, few of them may uh, it may ask you like and pay as you go as like it is a storage. Uh, on the storage mounted part, just create storage. Uh, okay, sir, okay. for the first timers, if we can go a little bit slower, that would be fine. Yeah, uh, just if anyone has stuck anywhere, just let me know. We'll go slow uh, as much possible. Okay. Yeah, I hope you're all able to see. So it, it may ask you for the for, uh, like an pairs go. So just click on the pairs go and for the create. So once you are able to uh, create the storage, that is a free storage. So it will show as like an requesting a cloud shell, it will be succeeded. So cloud shell uh, access, we will get it. So those who have missed, uh, you can uh, see at my screen, so on the right top corner, there is a cloud shell option. If you, you have to click on the, you know, in our dashboard on the right top corner, there's an option called cloud shell. Click on the cloud shell. So in the cloud shell, sometimes it may ask you if you are for the very first time, it will ask you for the permission pay as go, uh, since it's the trial version. So you just click on the pay as go, select pay as go and click on the create. So the create, request will create as the cloud shell and it will be shown as like a succeeded. Okay. Uh, Today I'm, uh, I'm going to in this uh, answer. I'm going to make use of a few of the commands. Those commands I will just drop in the chat box. Just will make use of directly just to make easy to copy paste it instead of uh, typing them. Uh, I have shared a few of the comments on, in the chat box. Feel free to make use of the comments as we go on uh, together in the uh, and so on. Okay, so now the very first part is, so what we have to do is we have to, uh, we have an 
uh, I hope successfully everyone able to make your uh, Azure IoT Hub account. There's like a free trial version account. So that's good. That's the first stage. We are all uh, succeeded, I hope. The second step is to create an like an IoT Hub with an Azure uh, client. So command line interface that we are making use of for to create an Azure IoT Hub. So the commands that I have already shared in the chat box, you can make use of the commands there. So the first command that we are going to use is you can you can uh, before executing you can uh, refer my screen. Okay, it's not taking my copy. I have to just enter it. Uh, that is really like an exit group. Uh, so first we are going to create an IoT ad resources. So create. So what is the create name? So just give, you just can make a copy paste as well. So create and the name will be like and what I'm giving is like an IoT edge resources. IoT edge resources. And the location it will ask. So you can give any of the locations. So I'll just get give like an West US two uh, as a location. You can give any of the location here uh, for the cloud usage. This is to create a. Uh, this command is specifically to create an a cloud uh, resource group to pan uh, to like any to manage all the resources that we are going to uh, utilize in today's session. So location will be like an West US two. Just give few minutes. Uh, it will create you the resource. Yeah, that's how we are uh, able to get it. I hope you are able to see my screen. So what I have done is I have created a, like an uh, cloud resource that's like an call, called the named as like an IoT edge resource and the location I'll just give like an vestios too. So you must be able to get an like an provisioning state as in succeeded. You just directly copy paste the command that I have given. And the very next step. OK, we have an uh, IoT edge resource. Now we need an IoT hub. So we have to form an IoT hub. So here, um, during the formation of an IoT hub, the IoT hub has to be with an unique name. So this IoT hub will, will be under the resource that is like an IoT edge resource. Just now what we have created the IoT edge resource under this. Uh, we are going to create a specific IoT app. The command as a given, just make use of the command. Is that we are going to create an IoT hub create. So in which resource group? So you have to specify the resource group for the IoT app creation as well. Resource group is IoT edge resources. Just know what we have created. And the name of the IoT Hub. So here one thing, uh, don't directly copy paste this command. It won't work. So there is an, a square parenthesis in that name IoT Hub is there. So you have to replace that by making use of any of the unique name. Just give your name as well. That will be very fine. So I'm just giving as like an um, um, Workshop cloud. This is my. I want to be confused by giving the name to the hub. Okay, since it is our IoT hub, so I'm giving the name as like a workshop hub. 
So make sure that to change the uh, in the don't directly copy paste the command what I have shared in the command. So there is an inside the square uh, inside the flower parenthesis there is like an I would uh, hub name. So instead of that you have to give some unique name. So and then followed by you and then it will be a partition. The partition count is for the for the, uh, for the uh, storage access. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. My command is wrong. Probably. Uh, have to create some spelling mistakes. May I find some help? Yeah. Very close name. Workshop group. Okay, so this is the part which is going to consume some time. Uh, I can tell like in some few minutes uh, for the creation of an IoT app. So, okay, IoT Hub workshop is not available. If you okay, uh, the name what I have given it's not available. If you face any error, just change the name the instead of an workshop effect. Okay. I've given the command to create an specific I, uh, IoT hub. So yeah, you can see the status on my screen that is showing as running. You all must be able to get the status as running. Like if, you, if you get an error, it will be like in because you already have one of the free hub uh, in your subscription that can be like in an SKU, uh, you can change it to any stuff in S1, you can give it like an S1 uh, if you get an, any error, or else you can directly change the hub name. So I would hub name. Even I faced the workshop hub, I faced an error. Just the reason I changed the name as like an e-tech. And now it is showing me the status as like in running. Don't worry, just uh, refer to my screen and then uh, execute the command, follow the same steps. Okay. Uh, this yeah creation of an IoT hub um, will take as I mentioned it will take some time so uh, it could be like in two minutes max that's it two to three minutes so after this uh, creation of an IoT hub we are going to create uh, specifically the IoT edge device so in the creation of an IoT edge device so to identify our simulated devices. Sir, can you just repeat the steps, sir? So I yeah. have sure. not able to open the Azure client. Uh, Are you able to open the uh, co command shell now? Uh, no, command. Uh, I'm not able to open that. Okay. I'm in the uh, create new the okay. Azure services. So, okay. That window I'm with it. The other part I'm not able to open. Okay. Are you in the this dashboard? The topper part are you able to see? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, good. So once after you enter to the dashboard, so on the right mm -hmm. top corner there is an icon called cloud shell. So click on the yeah. cloud shell, you will get this back. Okay, yeah. So here um, the very first step is like we have to create an IoT edge resources. The comments mm -hmm. are, are shared in a chat box. Di directly you can copy paste the first mm -hmm. command. Okay. So this won't take time. So successfully, uh, just I'm following the steps again. So this is to create an our IoT edge resources. So we have we called a, like an uh, Azure group create the name. We called a, like an IoT edge resources and the location. 
So immediately we will get an uh, provisioning status as succeeded. So then it means successfully we are able to create an uh, uh, resource for our activity. So I, that is an IoT address. Once after that, we need to create an uh, our IoT hub. For the creation of an IoT app in the resource that is an IoT edge resource, make use of the second command. So just one thing to highlight in the second command, what I have given in the chat box, there is an flower parenthesis with an IoT uh, hub name. So instead of that, you have to give any of the unique name. Just give your name itself. If you face any error, just replace, just change the name. That's it. In my case, I have given the name as ICTEC. This is our second comment. Just follow the steps, we'll take time, no, no worries. So uh, during the formation of an um, IoT hub, this takes very, uh, as I mentioned, two to three minutes of time for the uh, formation of the uh, creation of an IoT hub. During the creation, you will get an uh, status like an running. You must be able to see the status as like running and it will take like in two to three minutes. It means it is forming an IoT hub and the name that you are given for the IoT hub, it is like a valid one, it is available name and it's going to uh, create you the IoT hub. Just wait for a few minutes, uh, two to three minutes and then it, you will be able to get successfully the of creation of an your IoT hub in the name of an ETEC. The complete uh, JSON format, what you will get, the complete status you can see here. So in the status, you can just those who have already executed, those who are able to create the IoT hub, just go through the uh, details in the JSON, what is there. It's like in finish and the identity, uh, ID, e tag will be there and the location, the location what we are given and the name of the hub is like an e tag and the properties are there. And if you go on below, the some of the features are present is don't have anything and the host name is like an host name is existing. And the resource group. So in which resource group we have created? We have created in a IoT edge resources. So in our command we have chosen, we can have multiple as well. So specifically we have created only one edge, uh, resource that is an IoT edge resource. In that IoT edge resource we have uh, created the IoT hub. That's why comes here. This data shows that successfully we are able to create an IoT hub. That's when effect. Okay. Um, the next part is so. Just let me go back to my slides. Okay. This is the first tab. Uh, like and first task, what we wanted to do, we are we are supposed to create an IoT super. Uh, those who have done uh, very much cool, congrats. Those who are uh, it's our first IoT app, we are successfully created it. Now the second point, second step is to register an IoT edge device. This is the IoT hub is there. So we need an IoT edge device. So we need to uh, create an a device identity for our simulated one. Uh, so that we can communicate with our IoT hub. So IoT hub is like completely in a cloud. So we need one device, right? We need a simulated one device. So where it can communicate with our specifically IoT hub. So that's what we are going to create an uh, IoT edge device. So to create that one, just go back to your uh, Azure. Where is my Azure? So here, 
uh, in the Azure Cloud shell. So enter like an uh, I have shared the two more comments in that one. So the first one is to create the device name like in my we have to if we are give, creating a simulated one for that device there will be must be a specific uh, uh, unique name has to be there. So I now we are going to create our own device simulated device uh, for our IoT hub. So that's what we are uh, by making use of the third command. So in the uh, in the chat box, what are all the comments are shared in that one? Just take the third command and just replace the IoT hub name. The Uh, those who are not able to make it, just follow the steps as here. I have shared some of the comments, right? So in that one, take the third command. So what I am telling is every time make sure that whatever the hub name that you have given, that will be an unique hub name. So in my case, I will just mention like an e-tech. So you can give the any your name at itself as like an hub name. So but it has to be the same that you have given during the creation of an hub name. So in the second step, we have created an IoT hub drive. So that same hub name that you need to follow. In this hub, we are cre creating a new device. That device is called as like an My Edge device. You people just directly copy that uh, command and only replace the last hub name with your unique uh, your hub name. So whatever that you are using, utilizing. So you can see in my screen as well, I am just replacing the hub name, that hub name is Ignite. And I'm creating the device uh, that is called as like an My Edge device and the hub name is Ignite. Okay. Here very much important you can see here in my screen so once you give, give the command this request uh, extension azure iot do you want to install it now so it will ask for install those who have used the uh, linux platform ubuntu or fedora you may have if you want to install anything it will ask for the permission so just give yes y and enter i'm repeating the once again the steps so first step we have created a resource that is called as like an IoT edge resource. The second step is like an we have created an IoT hub. So that is uh, with an unique name that is by making use of the second command. Now as a third step, we are in the third step. So in the third step, we are creating a device, simulated device. So that device is called as like an my edge device. So where, where we have to create the my edge device that has to be in our IoT hub, right? So that's the reason my edge device that is like an edge enabled in the in the uh, IoT hub that is an e So the IoT hub name can be anything. I'm just repeating. Once after you giving the third command, it will ask you for the permission to install the extension. So you have to give the permission by giving just Y letter. Then uh, successfully, you will you, you must get, get an uh, status as like an IoT edge true and the status as enabled and successfully it is cre created. I hope you all able to follow the steps. We have created the edge device. Okay, so the next next step is. So we have a resource inside the resource. We have an hub inside the hub. We have an one of our our own unique simulated edge device. Cool. Inside this edge device, how to identify it? So there must be an unique string. It will be there, right? So that's what we will call it as like a connection string. We are we are going to make use of that connection string very later on. Uh, but at present, let let we see how to uh, get that connection string. So get the connection string just in a chat box. What are all the com uh, the commands I have shared? Make use of the fourth command. 
just copy the complete command as you can see in my screen and just replace the up name. Make sure to give the unique up name. Uh, if anyone has stuck, just feel free to uh, ask. You can see in my screen those who have uh, missed what I told. So you can look at my screen. So we have created successful edge device. So the edge device is ready for us uh, to serve. So we need to get the connection string for the device uh, to fetch the uh, data remotely, right? So the connection string. Uh, just make use of the device identity. The device identity is the connection string. So what we are telling, show the connection string. The device ID identity, that is a connection string, show that one. For which one? For the device ID, my edge device. That's what the new device from the hub name, that's an ECTEC. So there is an uh, IoT edge resources. Inside the IoT edge resources, there is an IoT hub called as an ECTEC. Inside that IoT ECTEC, we have an, our own edge uh, device that is called as a my edge device. For that IoT edge device, we are getting the connection string. So that's what. So the connection string, this is what you can see here the host name. Host name, complete stuff. Just copy this one connection string and place somewhere in a notepad and somewhere. Uh, this will be utilized later on to fetch the device details uh, remotely, the sensor as a device simulation details remotely. So we need this connection string. So we are going to make use of this connection string later on. So just copy paste the, uh, so, and place it somewhere. We'll utilize it later on. Okay. What all we done till now? And, uh, so we'll just recap that part. The first part is like an IoT edge resources we have created. Inside the IoT edge resources, we have created an IoT hub. So the hub name that is like unique name, those you people have given it. So for this IoT hub, we have created a simulated device. So that's what our edge device. This simulated edge device, there is no module. There is a completely pure plain edge device. So for that edge device, what we have created, so uh, we have taken the specific unique identif identification of the device that is called as like a connection string. I hope you are able to, everyone able to get the connection string. I'm trying to go uh, as much as the slow. Uh, if anyone has stuck, just feel free to ping. Okay. If you are able to successfully get the connection string, next part is to install and start the uh, uh, this one, our uh, IoT Azure Edge runtime. So step four, uh, I'm not able to do it. It says unable to. Uh... Okay, uh, just let me show that one. I will show that one. The fourth step. Okay. In the fourth command, uh, are you able to get? Uh, are you able to create your own edge uh, device, my edge device? Are you uh, able to? Third, third command. step. I have uh, third step. I have got it. Okay. Uh, after this, it says try this HTTPS AKMS client reference. Uh, okay. It's uh, giving a website name. Make sure the, to give the hub name. At last, hub name has to be unique, the one what you have given. It has yes, to be sir. the same. Hub, hub underscore BIT I have given. Okay. Uh, so is, it the same, steps, is, is it the same that you have used in the second step during the creation of an uh, yes, hub? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Same. Uh, are you not getting the connection string? No, sir. The fourth step, uh, I'm not getting. 
I have installed uh, this thing continue uh, to run after the extension is installed and it is successfully installed. Okay. And then the fourth step uh, I'm giving uh, device identity connection string show device ID, my edge device, hub name, and then the hub underscore BID. Uh, what, what is the error that is showing? Unable to. Sir, shall I share my screen, sir? Yeah, 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 sure. I'll just stop mine. This is the error what I'm getting. Just one minute. Uh, just one minute. Be there. Um, okay. Uh, IoT hub name uh, hub underscore mm -hmm. BLT. Uh, that is parenthesis. You can uh, you can remove that. Okay. Uh -huh. I'll try. Uh, just just go, uh, please go to, uh, up. Um, one minute. Oh, I've named your user the parenthesis. Okay. Uh, Here it is taken. Okay. Uh, IoT resources. This is the first command. And uh, okay, we have created the IoT resources. Cool. And the second thing uh, in the IoT, I create resource group IoT head resources. Name is like an uh, hub BIT. Try this. Okay, uh, for the second only, it gave uh, an error for you, right? Mm, here, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so for the uh, creation of an hub, so AZ IoT hub is there, right? So just remove the mm -hmm. parenthesis. No need of an, any parenthesis. Just give a uh, simple word. Uh, I will show my screen so you can follow the mm. Okay. Yeah, space and uh, click enter. Mm -hmm. uh, enable to find the IoT hub. Just one. Okay, uh, AZ IoT Hub, and then you have given the device uh, identity. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, IoT Hub, uh, create one minute. Uh, okay, IoT Hub, as is Azure IoT Hub, create resource group, IoT resources. Okay, um, the second in the command, what I have shared, uh, just the mm -hmm. second command. After the yeah. IoT edge resources, you have to give a space yeah. and then iPhone iPhone name. Just try the second command, madam. Second command resource group. Yeah. Resource group, yeah, resource group. Just copy the second card. Yeah, that's the one. So if anyone are facing the same issue, you can get it resolved here. Test it. No, and no. Uh, after the resources, just give one space. After the resources, yeah, give one space there. And uh, for the IoT uh, name, and after the name uh, as well, you give one space. And remove the parenthesis, no need. Space. Okay, and uh, it's the F1. And uh, again, after the F1, uh, yeah, space has to be there. After the F1, again, space. Hmm. And the partition count is two. Okay, uh, I hope we are good to go. Here also, should I give the space? After no, no, no. Partition? That is good. That is good. Not required. Mm -hmm. uh, resource group uh, could not be found. Okay, IoT and resources is not found. Then you have to give the first okay. command. We'll try the first command. Very first command. Okay. Okay. Uh, that command in the chat box I sent. That is AZ group create. 
Okay, successfully we are. Now, now uh, give the second one. Uh, just give the upper tab, guys. The one which we gave now with the spaces. Yeah, yeah. Before the this one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that one. Correct. Just. Yeah, we must go now. Oh, oh, oh. IOT resources. Please check the spelling once. Resources IOT. I is caps. IOT is it in the chat box? It is small IOT. Okay. No, no. Oh, during the creation of and uh, what the resource name you are given, the same. Just make sure to it is same, madam. Okay, IOT edge. Yeah. Yeah, it's same IOT edge resources. Capital I small OT edge resources. IOT resources. Main and the pub IOT view from partition count. Yeah, uh, resources group IOT resources could not be found. Um, yeah, please give one second, enter. Mm -hmm. I will be at this also. Okay, I'm um, just one. Okay, in, in your dashboard, click on the all resources. Click on the part of an all resources. You know, just just minimize this. Uh, yeah, just click on. You can go to the left side. The three lines are there beside uh, Microsoft Review. All resources. All services or resources. Below that, below that. Yeah, right. All resources. Closure central data free trial. Okay. Uh, cloud storage extensions. Okay. Oh, okay. This is okay. Edge resources is not creating. Uh, okay. Coming back to the command. Um, you, you can uh, expand it. Just uh, the very first command. Just one minute. My edge to create. Okay. IoT edge resources successfully actually showing it like uh, succeeded. Hmm. Succeeded. Create a resource group. I would be the resources. Resources. You give the comment once again. The creation of an IoT hub. A first step, Mister. No, no. Second, second step, madam. Second step. I'll just uh, copy paste it from the chat box. Yeah, yeah, better uh, copy paste from the chat box. Okay. IoT resources name IoT hub name SQL hub partition count. Okay, uh, at the very beginning there is a space. Uh, just remove the space as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. I would have a spread a resource group. I would be add resources. No, yeah. Uh, 
of partition count pistol. Uh, instead of SKU, just give yes one, madam. Sir, it is uh, uh, the, the command prompt has uh, now it is not showing that unable, but it is running. It's still running. Oh, uh, just will wait. It it has to show as like a running status. Okay, I hope uh, it's running now. It takes some time for the creation of okay, an sir. Okay. After this command, you can follow the next command to create the uh, like and create your our edge device that is like an my edge device. For that, directly you can copy paste the command. Okay, fine, sir. Okay, Only sir. Thank uh, you. Up, up name you have to give uh, up B A D. Okay, fine, sir. Yes, sir. yeah. Thank you, sir. I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay, sure. Uh, coming back, sharing my uh, screen back. OK, so um, if anyone uh, just fa facing same kind of an issues, just make sure to make sure that the command is proper what you are given and you can go ahead. OK, OK. Uh, so till now we are able to uh, do a few steps. So just I'm uh, making sure that everyone following that one. So first part is like I'm creating an IoT health resource. Yeah, successfully we are able to do that, and then we have uh, successful. We are able to create an IoT hub. So in the IoT hub creation, make sure that you are given the unique hub name. So of the same hub name has to be utilized for the next series of commands. The third command is to create your edge device. So the edge device is called like a my edge device. Don't change any of that one. Just give the up name that is the one what you are utilizing uh, unique one that you have created after the creation of an your iot hub successfully you must be able to uh, get the connection string so this connection string is the identity unique identity of that device so now uh, during under the all resources part you must be able to see i can see um, so this is the storage account and i have created one of the iot hub so the resource group is IoT Edge Resources. Inside that IoT Edge Resources, I have created one of the IoT Hub. So that is like an e -tech. So uh, those who are able to get the connection string by making use of this fourth command, and if you are all able to get the connection string successfully, and just make a note of this connection string, and then you can, there is an option called all resources, or else at the left top corner, you can see under the favorites, so all resources. So if you click on all resources, you all must be able to see what we have created till now. The two steps. The two steps are like an creation of an uh, IoT uh, hub that is like an eTech. E -tech. So it will be an your name in the madam uh, account. So as we have seen, just like an IoT uh, sorry, hub underscore BIT. So in the same way, this, that is like an hub underscore BIT is a IoT hub, and the resource will be for everyone. It will be same. That is like an IoT edge resources. Okay, uh, have successfully everyone able to follow this one. So next part, what we are going to do is is like an uh, starting with an uh, edge runtime. So for this end time. So I hope everyone have uh, like a Windows Admin Center. Make sure that you all have a Windows Admin Center. So this is the one. So in most of the windows, it will be there. Uh, those who don't have like a Windows Admin Center, make sure to uh, you have to download it. It may take some time uh, in morning in the chat box. Madam, I already shared to download the Windows Admin Center. So in this uh, Windows Admin Center, we are utilizing to uh, get our uh, edge device runtime. So in this uh, like a Windows Admin Center, specifically you have to log into your specific account. So once you are able to log into it, you will able to see uh, as like this Windows Admin Center. Okay. 
I hope everyone able to uh, log into the Windows Admin Center. Make sure that you are able to log into the Windows Admin Center and sign in to that account. I'm just giving few minutes uh, for everyone to make sure that you log into the Windows Admin Center and don't close the our uh, Microsoft Azure uh, Central. We need this one later on. So just to make sure that you uh, log into the Windows Admin Center. Once you log into the Windows Admin Center, on the right top corner, you will see uh, like, uh, like in settings gear. So this one settings part, click on the settings part, under the settings part, you will see an another called as like an extensions under the gateway. So this is going to act like a gateway. So under the gateway part, you are going to see an extensions. Click on the extensions. I hope you are even able to follow it. First thing, the very first part is to open your Windows Admin Center and log into it. Once you are successfully able to log into the Windows Admin Center, so just come to the on the right top corner. So you will see an settings uh, that is like an uh, setting gear gear kind of an icon will be there. So click on the setting gear icon. Once after that, so you will get an gateway session. Under that gateway section, there is an extension. We need to install some extension here. So click on the extension. So once you click on the extension, you must be able to see few of the options like an available extension, installed extensions, feeds, and all. So click on the feeds. Gateway extensions, under that extensions, click on feeds. I hope everyone able to make it. Uh, don't worry if you are not able to see these two uh, packages that what I have, um, it, it could be an empty in your system. So make sure that under the extensions, you are in a feed tab. So in feeds, now click on add. So because we are going to make use of one of the packages so that is an Azure package, we need to install that package here. Click on the add package resources. I hope successfully able to open the uh, add package resources part. So once you are over, able to open this one, in the commands, what I have given in the chat box, there is a fifth command, the last one, that looks like an URL. So that is like an HTTPS, I find double colon, aka W, uh, that's like an Microsoft, MS slash WAC, I find Insiders feed. Just copy paste that complete URL. Extension feed. Just copy paste the complete uh, URL what I have shared in the chat box and click on the I hope everyone able to follow it. This URL, don't get confused. This URL I have given in the chat box. That is the fifth uh, point. In the fifth point, there is an URL. Just copy paste that URL as it is. So uh, you have to go to the extensions, extensions feeds, feeds as well as click on the add button. In the add button, just give the uh, URL. So you have this once you are able to make it, then you will uh, get an option called as like and select, sorry, add. So you click on the add option after that you under the like and you, once you go to the available extensions click on the add and, and after that you have to come back to the available extensions in this available extensions just search for an like an azure iot edge these are the list of an available uh, extensions are there in this one just search for an azure iot edge 
I hope you are able to see this one. I, I hope you all able to get an Azure IoT Edge. So this is from the uh, package feed that we have included just now. Azure IoT Edge. This is the package. So click on it. And it will ask an option called like an install. So just feel free to install it. In my system, it's already installed. So I'm just repeating. Uh, this package feed that we will enter in under the feeds, click on add and just give the URL. So and uh, click a button called add. That's it. After that, come back to the available extensions. Under the available extensions, there are so many extensions that uh, will be there. So to install, select the IoT uh, Azure IoT Edge. Once you select the IoT Azure Edge, so you will get, get an option called like an install. Click on the install option. So that will install the extension that we want uh, that we are looking for in this uh, uh, admin center. I hope all are able to follow this one. So can you just repeat the steps, sir? So okay. yeah. Uh, first, the very first step is open the Windows Admin Center, and then go to the uh, just log into it. Open Windows Admin Center and log into it. That's it. Second step is go to the gear icon. That is the settings icon. Go to the gear icon. There are settings icon, uh, icon on the right top corner. In that one, under the gateway, there is an option called extensions. There's an option called as like an extensions. Click on the extensions. In a settings, there's an left side uh, in the bar. There's an extension. Click on the extensions. Once you get an extensions, so this is where we actually install the packages, required packages. So to install the packages, we have to give the feed name. So before, uh, once you click on the extensions, directly go to the feeds. Extensions and then feeds. Here, I need an Azure IoT Edge uh, as like an one of the package that need to be installed. So to install it, I need to give the package feed. So to add that one, click on Add. So and then there's an URL, one of the URL that I have shared in through the chat box. So that is the fifth point. The URL. The last one is the URL. So just copy paste the URL as it is. So once you copy paste the URL as it is, so click on the add option. So that is like an add package source. This is the package source actually. So click on the add. That's it. Successfully added feed. You have to get like a successfully added feed. So the URL you will be able to see here. Then after adding the feed, I will come back to the available extensions. In the available extensions, so many multiple packages will be there. So variety of list of packages will be there. There is like an Azure file synchronization, Cloud Shell, or as in cluster management, or as like an SDN one storage. So many things like that. In the available extensions, choose Azure IoT Edge. This is the one we are going to utilize. Azure IoT Edge. Azure IoT Edge. So once you click on the Azure IoT Edge, there will be an it will install it automatically. So make sure that you will install it. If there's an update or something, uh, if you are getting an icon like a status under that update or anything, just click on the Azure IoT Edge, double tap it, so it will get installed. I hope everyone able to follow the step till here. Okay, so once you are able to follow the steps still here, we are able to add like an IoT, uh, Azure IoT Edge package successfully we have installed in the in our Windows Admin Center. So the next step is come back to the dashboard. 
come back uh, to the dashboard. So uh, just click on you all on the Azure uh, that you are all in the available packages. So uh, uh, this is to install our uh, specific required Azure IoT Edge package. Once you all successfully installed the Azure IoT Edge package, just click on the on the left top corner the Windows Admin Center. Click on the Windows Admin Center. So once you click on the Windows Admin Center, you will come back to the main page that is like a main dashboard. So there, there you will get all collections. Under the all collections, one collection could be your system. You will get and then click on the add option. So under the window, Windows Admin Center, click on the add option. So just follow the steps. Go to the Windows Admin Center. With the Windows Admin Center, click on the Add option. Here, we are going to create add or create a resource. So we are going to create a new resource. So that is like an and the other resource at the last you will get an Azure IoT Edge. So this is this is here we are going to create an Azure IoT Edge as a resource. So on the and at the top bottom, so in the other resources there is an Azure IoT Edge. Click on the Create New. I hope you're all able to follow it. This time I'm, I'm uh, repeating the steps. Windows Admin Center. In the Windows Admin Center, so there will be an all collections will be there. You can see one collection that could be your system. No worries about that. Click on the Add button. Once you click on the Add button, you will get a list of an, uh, resources that is available. At the last, at the bottom, there is an Azure IoT Edge. So click on Create New. So we are going to create a new resource here. Nothing much. Yes. Click on the um, specifically click on the Azure IoT Edge. You have to see the three options. That's like an prerequisites, license terms, and uh, diagnostic data. So there are like an three steps are there. getting started, deploy, and connect. These three steps has to be followed. Make sure that getting started, deploy, and connect. So the first step, so once you enter here, just click on the next. And in the second step, license and terms. So just accept it and click on the next. And the third part is like in diagnose the data. Just. I'm just repeating this one among these three steps. First step, nothing to do. Just click on the next button in the license and terms. Make sure to you click on the checkbox that is an I accept. Make sure to click on the checkbox. Once you accept only, it will available. It will make, uh, enable the next option, and then optional diagnostic data. Here, make sure to turn on this one. So this is to send the additional uh, diagnostic data about all the features and some about the activities. So make sure to it will be off. Make sure to turn on this one. In the diagnostic data, come to the bottom part and just make sure that you will turn on the optional diagnostic data option and then click on the next part that is like a deploy. I hope you are able to follow till here. So once you are able to follow all the three steps, the first step will be like in getting started, you will get a tick mark. Successfully, you are able to make it. You will get a tick mark in the first step. The second step, you uh, in my system due to some uh, permissions issue is not showing. You all must be able to see one of the target device here. You all must be able to see one of the target device. I will show how it looks like. Okay, you can see the my screen now. After completing the first step, that is like a 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. Uh, so you will get a tick mark under the get started. Under the next stage, it is like in deploying. We have to deploy the device what we have uh, created, right? So for the deploying process, target device, just click on it. 
there will be an one of the device uh, that you can make computer connection name and the your windows pc specifically so make a double click on top of it that's it so make a double click on it so you will get a tick mark and the deploy will also get uh, after that at the bottom you will get a next option just look at my screen so select a target device there will be a specific device will be there so make a double click on it just to choose the device that you are going to utilize so that is like where you, where we are wishing to deploy the azure iot edge for linux on the windows machine just click on it and then there at the bottom there will be a next option click on the next option once you click on the next option you will enter to the provisioning uh, screen this will be the last one click on the options come, come to the provisioning part i hope everyone are following it so here nothing to make changes don't make any changes here uh, just leave as it is like a connection string, a string will be a manual one and the device connections string here i hope you all remember we have taken the unique connection string unique id unique id of our device i hope you all remember the host name in our command shell so that is in our where is that Yeah, I hope uh, do, once we executed the fourth command, we all received an unique ID, right? This is the unique command. Host name is equal to your IoT uh, hub name, IoT hub name, Azure devices, and this is the unique string. So this is what the unique string that you all received now. So I asked you all to keep it aside. We will be utilizing it later on. So now copy this unique ID and paste it on our device connection string so this these two are mandatory the first one is like a connection string manual don't need to change that one leave as it is and the second part is like a device connection string copy the paste your unique connection string this is for the provisioning process and provision with selected method I hope you all for following this. It's, it's like a very simple method. Steps. So we had a connection string in our in our like a cloud shell. So the by once uh, to identify the unique device identity. So you just copy that one and come back in your uh, Windows Admin Central. Then the third point during the 3.1 that the provisioning just give the connection string and click on the provisioning with select method. I hope you all successfully able to make it. Once you are able to make it, so under the all connections, you will be able to do that. Uh, you you all able to see like in two devices here. One will be your uh, Azure IoT device, and another one will be your system. Cool. So. Uh, now we are ready with an our uh, specifically uh, our Azure IoT Edge that like a module that we have to uh, specifically. Now what we have to do is we have to build a module and we have to deploy the module to our end device. So to create and we have to create and we have to deploy the module. So let's go back to our uh, Azure IoT Central. Come back to your Microsoft Azure. So we don't want this one. Come back to your Azure IoT Central here. You must be able to see the dashboard like this. I hope you are you all back to the your Microsoft Azure Center and you all able to see the dashboard. So in the dashboard, uh, since I have seen just now on the recent resources, I can see my IoT Hub and the, there is like an type is IoT Hub. So 
Now we'll um, access our IoT Hub and we'll deploy the module. So the module is to monitor the uh, some of the parameters can be like in temperature, humidity, and some of the pressure, and it can be different kind of parameters that we wanted to ma monitor. To monitor, so we have an edge device ready. We have to build a module and we have to deploy the module to the device. So let's let's work on that one. Okay, and all resources. Just click on this uh, specifically the uh, left corner tab, and then you will get the under all resources. Inside the all resources, make sure to go to your IoT hub. So in my case, the IoT hub is like an e tech. In your case, uh, in the MAM case, so when we have seen it's like an hub uh, underscore BIT. So once you since you have successfully created the hub, so make sure that you will enter into the IoT. Hub. Cool. So we have entered to the this is the IoT hub under the IoT hub. I will get like a lot of resources which is available for me, uh, like an query explorer, IoT devices, IoT edge, and uh, that's under the automatic uh, device management. And all. So now our main concentrated area is IoT edge. So once you Open your IoT hub that is an e tech, and under there will be a list of services available. In that one, there is an automatic device management. You will see an automatic device management. Inside that automatic device management, there is an option called as like an IoT Edge. I hope you are able to uh, figure it out. Automatic device management. So. In that device management, the, this is specifically with respect to the IoT device, uh, edge device, right? So click on the IoT edge. We have one of the IoT edge device. Just give few minutes, it's loading. We have to get our the IoT edge device, that is my edge device. Cool. I hope you all able to uh, see in my screen. So those who are not able to follow it, I'm just repeating the steps. Come back to the Microsoft Azure, go to the all resources. Once you go to the all resources, you must be able to see the hub that is IoT hub that you have created. So that is an e-tech. In my case, it's an e-tech. In your case, it will be a unique name that you have given. So once you click on the IoT hub under the list of services available, in that one, there will be an automatic device management will be there. In the automatic device management, you will click on the IoT edge. Okay, cool. Uh, IoT Edge, uh, we got it. So previously, using the third command, we have created one of the Edge device. The Edge device is called My Edge device. So we must be able to see that My Edge device as a device ID. I hope you are able to get it. So you can, you all can see as like in My device, like in My Edge device. Click on that. Uh, click on that device ID. That is a, that is one, one which is like in My Edge uh, device. Yeah, I have to get a new screen. Yeah, this is to configure the device. So select the modules specifically. I hope you are able to follow it. Just click on your My Edge device device ID. Once you click on it, you will come back come to the modules part. So here we need to set the modules specifically. So uh, to specifically set the modules, select the set modules. On the top, there is an option called as like a set modules. So click on the set modules. I hope you are able to make it. Let me let me show once again. Automatic edge management, IoT edge. In the IoT edge, I have one of the edge device that is like in my edge device that what we have created. In that IoT edge device, there is like a set modules. We need to module. We need to create a module. The what is the what can be the module? The module can be a temperature module, uh, humidity module, pressure module, any kind of parameter module. So that's what we have to create now, and we have to deploy it. So set module. Okay, successfully. And now we need to add the module, right? So we don't have any of the module. So to add it, IoT Edge modules under the section, there's an add option. Just make a drop down. Under that, there is like an add option. 
click on marketplace modules so we are going to make use of a simulated module that is like an just you simulated so if you click on uh, just you like a simulated we are going to make use of an simulated temperature sensor just i will show the steps once again okay i'm just going to show the steps once again you will come back to the um you will click on the my edge device once you click on the my edge device you have to set the module click on the set module once you click on the set modules well uh, setting the modules you need to basically choose which module has to be so go to the add option and the market mod place module and just give simulator there's only one one simulator simulated temperature sensor so this is one of the module okay so just choose the simulated uh, temperature sensor as a module and click on the option add okay now you can you all can see that under the iot edge modules i have added a module that is like a simulated temperature sensor and the status of that one is like a running so the simulated temperature sensor module is running at present okay now nothing that much to do here we have successfully added one of the module and just give on the next routes in the next route parts also no need to make any modifications um, the first route there are like an, you must be able to see the two routes one is like a normal route and another one is a simulated temperature uh, just delete the very top one i'm just removing the top one make sure that i'm just i will show once again in the add option marketplace modules in the marketplace modules we have uh, added the simulated one simulated temperature once you uh, add it successfully you must be able to see that module in the running status once you able to add it successfully so just go to the new uh, routes in the new routes this new, this route we are not going to option this is like and by default it will be created just delete this one and make sure that you have only the temperature uh, simulated temperature uh, hub so this is the only one temperature sensor tolo hub this is the simulated one you have so and then just click on the next review and create okay uh, this review part review part is showing like a uh, complete json file you all able to see the json file right this is the docker completely like and the docker module will be running on um, this json file which is what is created this defines like an all the uh, modules that we, we are what we are going to deploy uh, to our iot edge device and we will see like a simulated temperature sensor as well uh, the module that will run with an a two runtime modules that is like an iot edge agent and uh, edge hub so the three stuff we have to see one is like a simulated temperature sensor and one has to be the edge agent and the another one has to be the edge up uh, since just i'm running out of time and just uh, going a bit fast no worries i hope you can follow the steps so the three uh, parameters we are able to see here so uh, once after successfully just make sure that everything is successfully you are able to see here in the json file in the docker and everything will be in the status with an running status once you verify it just click on the option called create so once you click on the create option under the modules we have three modules and specified in deployment yes 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 the three modules now we have successfully created for an our simulated i uh, my edge device that is like in one of the simulated temperature sensor so and uh, one is like an edge up and the uh, edge agent these three stuff which is required so we successfully created all the three right now and we deployed it cool um those who have followed very good super next part is to visualize the data the generated data so this is the simulated one the module we have deployed let's come back to my slide yeah so we have created the module and we have deployed to our 
this is your my uh, edge device that is like my edge device we created the sensor in the azure container registry that is like a simulated temperature and we have deployed it successfully so once we deploy it we have to monitor the data right so to monitor the data i have just I have a slides for that in back now go back to your windows admin center switch back those who are following just switch back to the windows admin center again we are going back to the windows admin center this is where we are to visualizing the uh, real time temperature data uh, from the simulated uh, our sensor models i hope you all uh, following it properly once you switch back so you must be able to see the two stuff when under the all connection you will be able to the two stuff one is like an uh, your computer that is a local uh, machine that is like a windows 10 if it is windows 10 pc and another one is like an iot edge device the, that is the one just uh, recently we have created i hope you all able to make it follow so Okay, so everyone able to uh, see the two stuff, two parameters, uh, two devices specifically. One is your Windows 10 machine, and another one is your IoT Edge device. So our Edge IoT Edge device, which is simulated, we have deployed the simulator sensor modules, right? So the module is like specifically the temperature module. So uh, simulated temperature module just now we have deployed it. So we must be able to get the real time data from that module. So then after getting the data, we can perform the analytics. We can perform, we can store all the data. We can, whatever the stuff we want, uh, we can take any kind of an actions based upon the sensor data, we can perform it. So now to fetch the data in real time. So make sure that you will choose the specific, the IoT Edge device and click on the connect option. So click on the connect option. I hope uh, it must successfully connected. It will show a status as like a successfully connected due to my system permissions. I'm not just showing that one. Once you are able to successfully connect it, uh, successfully connected this specific device, our IoT remote IoT edge device. The next part is like, and you will get an option like and tools. Under the tools, you will see an, an command shell. This is in Windows Admin Center only. We are completely working on the Windows Admin Center. So just specifically under the tools, you will see an uh, command shell. Click on the command shell, and you can see one of the command. sudo uh, IOT edge list. What are the IOT edge list that we have created? The three, right? One is like a simulated temperature sensor, edge agent, and the edge up. So the three stuff. The those three you must be able to see here. Coming back once again, I'm repeating the steps. Go back to the Windows Admin Center. Choose specifically your device, IOT edge device, and then click on the option called Connect. Once you connect it. There will be an option called like in tools. Under the tools, there will be a command shell. Click on the command shell and just give the command sudo is the admin permissions, IoT edge and list. IoT edge and the list. That list just now what we have created in the Microsoft Azure uh, in our IoT hub. So those three that is like a simulate temperature sensor, IoT edge agent, and the edge of those three you must be able to visualize it okay cool so now once you are successfully able to see that one the next very next step is uh, this make sure that you are successfully able to connect to your uh, uh, iot hub and you are able to see all the modules that's there. the next very step is to see the temperature sensor the real time this is the command so you can see the view the messages from the temperature sensor module to the cloud just make use of the command iot h logs iot edge space logs space simulated temperature sensor space iphon f I will, I will just keep it in the command chat box iot um 
OK, uh, the previous command is to see the uh, devices list is like a sudo IoT edge list. So once you give like a sudo IoT edge uh, list, you must be able to see the three uh, modules specifically what we have created in our Azure security. That's the simulated one and here to see the real time temperature data. So we have to give and like an IoT edge logs. That, that's what we will capture the logs actually and simulated uh, temperature. Temperatures per second. Yeah, I will share both the commands in the chat box. So make use of those commands. Just copy paste those commands. Once you copy paste the second command, so you must be able to see the temperature sensor data. Uh, so you can see in a log as like an, so once it is like an initialize the uh, simulated temperature sensor and sending like an 500 messages. So it's like in temperature. So it could be like 21.983345 and the pressure. So and the ambient. So this is like a temperature. The logs will be captured. Captured. So this will be the real time data that we are going to capture. Okay. Um, those who are able to make it um, successfully, very good, uh, super. So yeah, it's like an uh, I know uh, virtually like an Anton is like a very challenging part. You all trying it. I uh, appreciate that one. So uh, very super effort. Uh, you all keeping it up. Um, good, good to uh, follow the steps. I hope everyone able to make it and if you are able to see the uh, temperature sensor data in real time. It's wonderful actually. Um, that's once after we get that temperature sensor data. Uh, I will just uh, since due to the lack of time. I'm not able to follow the like an analytics part like a machine uh, learning part in the edge device. So you can refer to the Microsoft Azure link as well in the website they have provided. So, um, even the lot of an uh, it, it can be like in blob storage access or as like an, it can be a stream analytics part. You can make use of a stream analytics as well. You can work on stream analytics in the app application development as well. And wonderful the um, a dashboard uh, like an graphical dashboard creation as well. So a lot of stuffs can be uh, and also the query or as the pipeline query uh, for creation or so alert and notification modules. It can be like in multiple modules you can utilize. So uh, even virtual hub uh, you can for, for create uh, and uh, you can or like a device provisioning process you can perform uh, in the hub. Uh, so a lot of steps. So what we are working like in bits and pieces. Why I am recommending this mainly is like instead of working on the bits and pieces completely different. So we can work it uh, like an integrated module complete end to end architecture. I know uh, this is really wonderful. Those who are completed successfully. Um, for that, I'm, I'm just going to complete uh, today's section. Um, yeah, so those who want my, uh, if you want to reach out to offline, I will just uh, make sure to include my email address. I will just drop in chat box. Or if you have any queries, we can, I can take up now. Even if you have any queries later on, you can try and you can, if you have any queries, you can reach out to me later as well. Um, you can throw my email address. The deployment, once we uh, simulate it here, and the actual uh, device when we use it, temperature sensor, will there be any difference or uh, uh, how much is the accuracy? Uh, this this simulated data is completely an uh, simulated one. It's not like a uh, real time device perspective. So mm -hmm. uh, so whatever we are simulating the device, the data we are pushing to the IoT app. So yeah, in this case. So in the real time, the physical devices what we'll use that will be completely different. So the real uh, even whatever the activities, whatever the stuff will happen, it may be to the once we data is received to the IoT hub. Once we receive the data to the IoT Hub, is like a gateway. So once the, uh, for the cloud, so once it receives the data, so it, we, we can we may need to verify like a certificate of the authentication process, or it can be like an provisioning of the device for a unique identity identification of the device, or is just 
performing the stream analytics um, process, uh, like converting the data to in a readable format, that is like an engineered format, or as storing the data into the block storage, all those activities can be performed. So all those activities remain the same. It won't differ at all. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any clarifications to be made. You can put that either in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and talk to these Mr. others. Hi, sir. Hi, sir. Uh, sir, my name is Baskar. Hi, Baskar. Yeah, please, sir. Uh, sir, I'm calling from Hyderabad, sir. Okay. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. My doubt is uh, what are the various ways in which we can provide security for uh, data that is being traveling uh, across IoT devices, sir? Okay. Uh, in the security part, Two ways. One is like an yeah, we know like an uh, key encryption process that is like a private key or public key encryption process that we will utilize. Uh, another part is like a certification process. So certification process, for example, if there is an IoT end devices and the end devices are connecting to uh, all the end devices are connected to an IoT edge. So IoT edge uh, that's like an IoT gateway. So make sure that like a thousand of end devices uh, are connected to an uh, gateway, and the gateway is connected to uh, specifically to an IoT hub. So, so here major thing is like our Azure IoT complete cloud has to be secured and make sure that the data is coming from this specifically uh, authorized device. At that time, we will make use of two things. One is like an, as I mentioned, one is a key en encryption process, and the second one is like an X.509 uh, certificate process. Uh, certificate mechanism is also very much uh, we will utilize nowadays in industries as well. So the unique the, the certificate with a specific duration uh, validity will be there. We will uh, deploy th that uh, into our specific. Uh, gateway modules and the validation of the certificate validation will happen uh, for every message for every any data will comes up to the iot hub that will be validated okay. so this again, yeah we can make yeah yeah thank you sir thank you very much thank you sir Okay, if there are no other questions, I will just try to conclude the session. I would like to thank others by you, sir, for taking his time and effort in giving a presentation on Azure. Um, I suppose there is one question, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, one question from Yogeshwari Parani Swami. Uh, the question is, for which type of application we can use? I'm sorry. Okay. Can, can you all right? Can you unmute yourself and pose the question to the speaker directly? It would be better. I think, uh, uh, Mr. Adarsh, uh, can you make an understanding of the question? Okay, uh, so which type of application we can use? Okay, as per my understanding, so the question is like, and what are the types of an use cases or case studies? Uh, so, to be frank, it is like an valid for even Viva for different kind of sectors. It can be, an, as I mentioned in the very beginning, it can be in retail, so retail industries, or it can be in energy industries, maybe like that. Uh, energy from the, like an uh, very like a pure uh, pure energy where we will call like a pure energy means solar energy wind energy these are like a pure energy or as like you know, energy from the 
uh, coal or mining. So specifically the energy from the mining. So those kind of energy industries or else it can be like a you know, manufacturing industries or else it can be uh, in, even, even in case of a you know, smart building uh, and constructions perspective as well. Uh, the emerging technology like an electrical vehicles, EV charging or else like an EV sector as well. And also we can utilize in transportation where uh, capturing the data from the transportation of a vehicle or, or as in a shipping or as in, in, case, in, in case of a flying. So all kind of a transportation of a goods. So this is not uh, specific to any the complete uh, what are all the features are there. It can be like completely the models can be utilized for any different kinds of use cases. It's not specific to any uh, of the uh, specific use cases or case studies. So uh, we can integrate, we can implement for any type of this, even for an agriculture, for other than for farming, and even for as I mentioned, like an, in the different different sectors, it can be utilized. It's like a vast area we can utilize uh, for an all kind of an use cases. I hope I answered your question. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you. I think it was extended session. Uh, I think uh, as far as my experience goes, I think would have been continued for another 20 minutes or so because uh, we, we are, those who are doing it for the first time definitely yeah. needs to go through a rerun. Anyway, we'll be sharing the recording of your presentation with them. Hopefully with that, most of the doubts will be get clarified. And you also have shared your mail ID and right. more of the queries may come. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time and effort. And in fact, uh, Department of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering has an active MOU with you. And we are looking forward for more of an interaction through your ECA tech. Uh, thank sure. you once again. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for the department to hosting this uh, wonderful event. And thank you, audience, as well. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the participants, the afternoon session begin will at 2 o'clock. You are requested to log in by 1.45 and preferably with a laptop or with a desktop. Uh, it, it is again a hands-on session. I hope to see you all in the afternoon session also. Thank you. Thank you very much.